Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everyone. Happy Thursday. We're excited to be here and talk about how AI is going to help legal with examples. That is what we are doing today, guys. We're literally going to show you demos of platforms that you can use. So we're excited. How's everyone doing today? Outstanding. Outstanding. I love that, William. Love it. All right, turn those cameras on. Don't be shy, guys. This is a great networking opportunity. We are here to educate. We are here to have fun. Um, we may have a guest surprise at the end. So if you think you want to sign off early, I really encourage you to not because we've got something super fun planned for the end. Mm -hmm. We've got some great backgrounds going on today. Look I got to say, William, I don't know where you are out there. It looks like you might be on a boat. I think he's on his yacht. Well, that's a catamaran. That's actually a submarine. That's the, uh, I was a safety diver on the submarine that for uh, Sir Richard Branson when he went down to the Marianas Trench. No Incredible. way. Wow, that's awesome. I'd love to pick your brain. That was probably a trip of a lifetime. Oh, you'll find nothing but cobwebs. Yeah. Oh. Gary, I like oh, yours. Yeah. We've got a futuristic style there. So guys, we're excited to have you. Thanks for joining. I'm Colleen. I'm this Annie. Is Annie, this is now our third series of our AI webinar. Um, hopefully you've joined us before. Put a one in the chat if you've been to one of our webinars before. We're going to force you to participate. So this is a nice warm up. All awesome. right. All right, well, I, I see, see some, some familiar names. Yeah, I see familiar <laughs> names there. It's good to see everyone again. Oh, we're excited awesome. to be here. So on that note, should we kick it off? You guys ready to begin? All right. Let's let's do it. Oh, C's. Okay. So yes. someone remembered we like C's. So when you're happy and want to clap, hit that C button and we'll know. This is an interactive class. So if you have questions, feel free to ask in the chat. We're here to educate, we're here to have fun. And like I said, stick around for the end because you're not gonna want to miss it. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's, let's get it kicked off, let's get started. This is our webinar series 301. Let's meet the team. As you know, my name is Colleen and I am joined by the great Annie. Annie is phenomenal in all AI product. Chad is in the room. Chad is our legal marketing expert. Someone needs to mute. Yes, we will. We'll mute all on that one. And none other than Mr. or Mrs. Chad GPT, as we all know. So the crowd's the same here. We're here to teach and educate. So let's just jump right in and have some fun. Awesome. Sounds like someone's got their. Uh... Yeah, before we get kicked off, can we just make sure everyone hits the mute button in the corner? Just so that we don't have any other feedback coming. Yeah, if not, we can mute all on our side. Awesome. So let's kick off with some news stories. Yeah, we got some. Yeah, we've got some news updates. Let's hit it. Creative thinking. Who's creative in this group? Throw a one in the chat if you think you're creative. I, I kind of think I am. Yeah. Kind of. Some days. So okay. before we wanted to kick in. 7.5. I like that. Right. <laughs> before we wanted to dive into um, some of the newer stuff, we wanted to give you some news updates of some things that have been coming up with okay. ChatGPT and AI in the news. So let's talk about it. So actually, I just read this article yesterday where the University of Montana recently conducted a test to see how creative students are and compared that to chat GPT. So Annie, let's see, what is the Torrance test? Yeah, so the Torrance test of create, creative thinking is a multifaceted test. There's a lot of different sides to it. If you're not familiar with it, yeah, I was it was new to me yesterday me as too. well. Um, but it is a test that's administered by researchers to, to assess someone's creative capabilities. Um, and they do things based on what a written response would be, what a drawn response would be. And it looks to see how unique the ideas are that are generated. So did someone else come up with this? Is it a really popular idea to a question? Or is it something novel that we haven't seen before? Um, so they tried it with three, GPT-3, and then they later chatted with ChatGPT-4. Well, and if you were paying attention in our series 101, you know what ChatGPT-4 is capable of. So how do y'all think ChatGPT-4 scored? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, All right. First person in the chat. We'll get it. And it looks like Sarah was oh, right so there. Sarah came in quick. You might have seen the same news alert that we did. I was just about to say, uh, Sarah, did you see that news alert? Yes. Are you just, are you just part of the 1%? Yes. <laughs> what do you think it is? 
<laughs> okay. So, chat, Sarah is correct. So chat GPT four, not chat GPT, chat GPT three. So yeah. chat GPT four um, scored in the top 1% of test takers. So that means that when they administered this test, um, they did it to students and then they also gave it to chat GPT and the responses that chat GPT were given. Um, they gave it to the coders. They didn't tell them it came from a computer right. and those got placed in the top 1%. So the people who were ranking and assessing those scores, they had no idea that it was AI involved. And again, the reason we bring this up is because we're just reiterating the fact that this technology is moving rapid, rapid, fast in many different areas. And this is just an interesting one. So. Absolutely. And also to that, just that reminder, when it comes to chat GPT four versus three, um, sometimes there are the perks of paying for the plus membership. Yep. It's 20 a month. Um, but that's what one of the things that gets a little more creative. In yeah, this one absolutely. No, I happily pay my $20. Right. And the right. second Ooh, update. We like a, our news round. This one is a really exciting big update. one. So Microsoft had a lot of days on the press this week, and they had two major announcements. The first one is one that's really exciting, especially for attorneys. Um, it's called Bing Chat Enterprise. So if y'all remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about how Bing Chat was included as a plugin for yep. ChatGPT. So you didn't even have to leave ChatGPT. You could suddenly use Bing. It was great. This week, they disabled that. They pulled the plug, and you might have been wondering what happened. Why did they take that away from me? Right. And enter the reason why. Bing Chat Enterprise is a new offering where you can sign up. It is going to be priced at $5 a month with the okay. Microsoft 365 subscription. So if you're using Microsoft Word and Excel already, you have that 365 subscription. Outlook. So this would be Outlook as yep. well. This is an additional $5 a month. Um, but what this does is it guarantees data protection, which is Interesting. really important as we all know. Um, but what this does is that it keeps your user and business data confined to one area. So usually when you're interacting with ChatGPT, it's like going to Google, right? You're typing in a search, it's searching the entire web, putting together the next best response. Whereas when you're doing it in the Bing chat enterprise, it's only going to be searching docs that you have. You could toggle to search to the outside world, but it's never learning off of your material to try to make the machine smarter, um, which is really <laughs> good from a data protection standpoint. I know that's been of interest for a lot of folks here. Right, absolutely. Well, and not only that, it, it even gets more exciting, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Because we've been talking about Copilot for a while now. Absolutely. And this was another additional add-on that they mentioned. So um, officially the pricing is out. It will be $30 a month. And this great and great inclusion, it will include that Bing Chat Enterprise. So if you have Microsoft 365 in the very upcoming months, they haven't mentioned when, I think it's this quarter, yeah. you will be able to add Microsoft Copilot um, co to your subscription. So that means that you could be in a Word document, type it up and it's going well. And you say, I have to make a presentation for court. You could just type in a command and it can make an, a PowerPoint presentation for you. And don't worry because we'll probably give you a webinar on how to use it once it's available for everybody. So we'll walk you through this steps. Yeah. And Sarah, that's a yep. really great question. So something that we're going to go over in just a little bit is fine tuning which platforms you want to play around with. Right. You can definitely have as many subscriptions going as you want, but you might find that you don't need them. So for that, to your point of $20 for chat GPT and 30 for Microsoft, you might find that when you start using Microsoft and you're using the Bing engine, that is running on chat GPT's power. So yeah. you might find that I don't need the $20 chat GPT subscription. I'm going to just focus it in on Microsoft, but we know some folks like Apple versus Microsoft. So there's You'll also find your market. ecosystem of, of how you want to use your AI. I don't think you're going to need everything down the road, but it's kind of fun to test what works for your practice or for your hobbies or what you're having fun doing. So those are two fun news updates. What Absolutely. Else? Next one is really oh exciting. machine learning. Okay. So we all know throw a one up there. If you know, if you've heard the term machine learning before. You want to recognize there it? There we go. Have you ever heard of Watson? Alexa, Siri, these yeah. are all machine learnings. It's taking our behaviors, it's taking our actions and it's learning from us. So we broke it down, Eli 5. I hope everyone remembers Eli 5, our favorite GTP term. So we'd say, what's an Eli 5 on machine learning? And my Eli one on it is it's Watson. Yeah. Remember Watson played Jeopardy? Did you play Kate, Ken Jennings? I think so. So there you go. Yeah, the Eli one here is that, what you feed it is what it learns. And yep. so the reason this is a um, really important piece to come up to highlight here is that Google has recently announced a search for machine unlearning. So historically, the way machine learning has always worked is that you give the computer information and it learns it. 
The machine is not smart enough for me to come up to it and say, actually forget that and remember this. Yeah. It only knows forget. So it would forget everything and it would start from fresh. <laughs> um, so that sometimes can be a problem when you've spent so long training it. You don't want to lose everything you've trained on, but there's human error, right? You're not perfect in every search. Right. Sometimes you might put in that you, something you don't want saved. Um, sometimes across the board, there can be issues of what you want to take out. And so Google has launched a challenge that they are looking for developers to help um, with helping maintain the good information and help forget the information you don't need. So, and we talked about this earlier this morning, is this going to cut down on hallucinations? We're not sure a hundred percent. You yeah. would think maybe yes, but it's something to definitely watch out on. Now, you know, with Google search engine, Google search engines will crawl your sites and bring all of your links back to Google. So when the person Googles you, your links show up and there's a feature where, Hey, I don't want my link showing up. And you can go to Google and say, hey, remove this, uncache this. So it's quite interesting that they're taking that same removal technology, yep. terminology, and putting it into machine unlearning. Absolutely. Quite interesting. Yeah. And the way that this comes up in the legal capacity as well is that we've heard a lot about, there's been research coming out of AI trying to um, do assessments. We talked about if you were to ask someone to say if a dog was dangerous or safe, yeah. people might make different decisions based on the situation. Right. Um, and so that is where it's really important. If researchers start noticing that there's bias in AI machines, it's crucial that we have the ability to unlearn that bias so we can make it be a more even slate. So that's something that we'll see um, moving forward, I'm sure. Absolutely. So guys, we have spent the last two webinar series teaching you guys about AI, about chat GPT, generative AI, diffusion AI. At this point, you've got a really good understanding. And we sat down and we said, okay, well, what's next? And what's next is how can you use these platforms to help your business? That's the most important factor here. It's great to have the knowledge, but how do we use this new technology to help build our business better? Because that's what we're all here to do is build a better business, ourselves included. So we wanted to dedicate this series to going through five different platforms that you could use in your practice. And don't worry, we will be sending around tomorrow a recap with links, with logins, everything that you need. So don't worry if this is a lot of information all at once because it, it is. is. Yeah. And jinx. And yeah. on that note as well, um, I saw the question in the chat. We will be, we are recording this as well and we'll upload it to YouTube. So you yep. can always revisit this as well at a later time. So the, we've got a few platforms to go through Lexus plus, which we've talked about now for a couple months, Bahala, mm -hmm. which is a firm financing case text and throw a one in there. If y'all heard of case text and their $650 million acquisition, mm -hmm. congratulations to our friends up North. That's yeah quite impressive. Um, do not pay. It's a consumer search function and Alexi, not Alexa, because I will continue to make that mistake. Yes. <laughs> Alexi. Alexi. See, I just did it again. Awesome. So should we dive into each? Let's yeah, see. let's do it. So case decks, everybody's familiar with case text. Seems to be the one that we remember the most. I think because it, yeah, and again, it's in the news. What does case text do? It helps us review documents, contract data, compliance, these are all things that we need in our everyday practice, but I'm going to turn it over to Annie and Annie's going to give you guys a demonstration of what their platform looks like and how you can utilize it. Absolutely. So um, something we've gotten a lot of questions about over the past couple of months are how can I upload documents? How can I interact with them? How can I search with them? If that is something you're interested in, Case Text is the place for you to check out. Um, so as you see, you can upload documents to Case Text and you can start interacting with them. You can ask it questions and it will highlight answers that are found within those documents. Um, additionally, something I know comes up quite frequently is e-discovery. Maybe you have a lot of e emails that you have found in e-discovery and you want to interact with them. You could upload them here, make your own little database, a little folder, yeah. and it searches based off of that. Um, something you'll start noticing in these questions is it's very user-friendly. It doesn't have to be legalese. You could ask it, identify this question mark. You, yeah. can, you can make it be, um, see, just like this. Let's see if it con complies with our company's policies. Um, so this is another facet of case text that's really helpful. That's nice. um, you can upload documents that are your company's policies or upload contracts you've previously signed that might be relevant. And 
case text is going to redline the document for you. So it's going to show you that, hey, in previous uh, contracts that we agreed upon, this was not a term that was, a, that was accepted. So you might wanna revisit it. And it will also offer suggested other terms. It also looks like a great, easy to use interface, which is so important. Absolutely. I think that's really one of the biggest things is that when you're interacting with AI, you don't want to have to be perfect at typing the response out. Right. Being prompting can be really challenging. Yes. And so this is a way that you can get some answers pretty quickly and in an easy, easy user-friendly manner. I will say we should have started off on this. We've got no skin in the game in any of these companies, Absolutely. guys. We're just trying to provide you what we see are the most valuable, which are coming up the most. So um, we're not endorsing anybody or Absolutely. not endorsing people. We're just saying, hey, what do we think is going to help you guys? So um, we should have started off with that one. Yeah, I should have kicked that off. Yeah, no, that's like... okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about Lexus plus AI. This has obviously been in the news just as much as Cake's case text. So Lexus plus AI will help draft contracts, legal briefs, provide practical guidance, analytics, a lot of really helpful things, summarize legal documents. Annie, let's walk through a demonstration of Lexus plus AI. Yeah. So a long name. It, is a, it is a little bit of a long name there. And so um, something that you'll notice very quickly when you're using Lexus plus AI is that it's going to be referencing Lexus's case history. So Lexus is the leader, um, although Westlaw is really up there too. A lot of, there's, uh, there's a lot of leaders now, um, but they have the, all of the case details and all the decisions and they have the code. So when you're asking Lexus plus questions, you are getting citations that are reliable. We always recommend you're still checking the content of said citation to make right. sure the case is relevant to what you're discussing, but the citation for the case itself will exist because it's pulling from Lexus's database, which is really important and it's different than chat GPT. Um, something else you'll notice is that you can ask follow-up questions. So you can keep engaging in it. You can save these answers to folders. You don't have to ever leave this search window, which can be helpful when you're doing legal research. I know that a lot of times different things pop up. Oh, I've got to work on a memo. I have to work on an email. And so this is where this comes really in handy is that you could have it draft an email based on the content that you just searched about. That's so great. perhaps you're recommending your client move their case from state court to federal court and you have all this search information from Lexus, you could ask it to help draft an email and it's going to insert some of those key details that help might help make the difference in helping um, your client understand what's at hand. How comfortable do we have to be with these platforms? Like, do we have to worry about hallucinations in Lexus or case text or how do we just protect ourselves to make sure that we're compliant? Absolutely. So hallucinations are something that learning as we go. So I never want to make the promise that there will never be a hallucination, sure. but I can say that Case Text and Lexus are examples of companies where hallucinations are going to be significantly less for a specific purpose. So just like I mentioned before, that normally ChatGPT is looking at the web as a whole, Lexus and Case Text are looking at very specific groups of data, yeah. and those groups of data have been approved to be looked at. So Lexus isn't going to post a fake citation, so yeah. you can trust that anything Lexus is generating is going to be a real citation. But just like anything, we got our helmet and we got our guide rails. We're ready Absolutely. for it. Absolutely. Can't stress that enough. All right. So our next platform. Oh, okay. Alexi. Alexi. I'll remember it one day, guys. But Is how, that a question? Was everyone paying attention earlier? Because it's game time, folks. The first person in the chat, you all know where the chat is, down at the bottom. The first person in chat that can answer this question, Jeopardy style. Alexi helps you draft this kind of legal documentation. I didn't even get to do 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 do. Well, we'll say this: it's it, it is Jeopardy style, so that oh, is a key yeah. to it. Oh. Jamie, you are. are I, oh no, I'm actually Ulacini, and I apologize if I am pronouncing your name wrong. You are correct. Good. What are memos? See, you got me on it. Yes. I love it. All right, Ulacini, great job. Congratulations. That's, now, this is an exciting demo. So this is. Let's dive right in. So something that is um, worth highlighting with Alexi is they have picked a lane and they picked it well. They yeah. do memos. That is what they're specialized in. Um, so as you're seeing, this is an example of how you'd get started with it. So you'd want to put in a little bit of a description of the case, um, something of so some case details, and then you can ask it the question, whatever you want the memo to focus on. Um, you can have it also suggests questions. Perhaps you don't know which question you're looking for, and maybe it's getting it from the situation. 
Um, you're going to be able to add details. So you're going to add jurisdiction. Um, it's again, it's got some of this case knowledge. And the reason this is important, we'll share yeah. in just a moment. Um, Alexi is one of the AI platforms that does come with a bigger price tag than others. Um, right now, AI, Alexi is rated at $299, $299 per memo, which is strikingly different than the $30 a month yeah. for Microsoft. So you might be wondering why, why right. is that here? Um, we're going to show you an example right here of what a memo generated by Alexi looks like. Um, there's a reason, in my humble opinion, why the price tag is high. So you're going to see what a memo generated from Alexi looks like. We've got the law. We've got the decision. We have sub law. Um, we also have citations and here that are going to be on the bottom. We have a very interactive document that is really robust, and it's something that would otherwise take you or an associate quite a bit of time to put together. Um, I know for me, it definitely would take quite a few days to get this much detail put in, um, and it shows the authorities as well. The reason this comes with a higher price tag is that they have humans reviewing all of these. They have humans in the loop on the quality assurance side, yeah. always checking to make sure that what's being generated is accurate. Um, and so Alexi has a promise that when you sign up, you can do a trial for two free memos. That's cool. So they recommend that say you wrote a memo that you are, you're proud of, you did it, you put a lot of work into it and you're confident in the decisions and what you've put out, you can ask that same question to Alexi and ask them to generate a memo and compare the two. See if it's on par, maybe yours is better and you're not interested in pursuing Alexi, but perhaps they have a different style or they include more details that you haven't been able to nail down just yet. And so it is something to consider. Um, again, we recognize that one's a little pricier, but the differences are noticeable. Right. Well, human eye always helps. So, it does. You know, you're paying for that. Okay. So how's everyone doing so far? We having fun. We're so, throw some C's up there for some claps, y'all. We get any claps? No C's. No C's. All oh, right. Okay. Thank you all. I'm gonna take the C's. <laughs> okay, that's a good idea. With the human yeah. review, how long does it take to produce results? It takes at most 24 hours, oh, but God. I've seen in the FAQs that it generates typically within a, an hour or so. Um, I'm sure if the question is a little bit more unique, it might take longer, but for right now, they're, they're promising within 24 hours. All right. Now we got, you know, we're feeling good. We got the love from everybody. So thank yeah. you. So let's now talk about Bahala. Every, Bahala. Everyone's favorite topic. topic is finance and money and billable. So Bahala started in about 2014 out of New York, and they were recently acquired privately from Onnit. And what Bahala does is they're taking their expertise in billing and predictive financing and teaming up with AI to say, okay, how can we help you build a business by understanding the trends and the patterns of what your firm is doing, what your billables, what your collectibles are, and how to grow from there. So you can see billable hour insight, benchmarking, analysis. It's a really interesting platform that Annie's going to walk you through right now. Awesome. So something that you'll notice right away with on it in Badhala is that it's focused for straight on the finances, like Colin yeah. mentioned. So it's going to focus on total spend for your firm. It's going to look at spend quarter over quarter. Um, it's going to show you some great visuals so you can get a little bit of an understanding broken down on graphs. Um, it can look at the average partner hourly cost, average associate hourly cost, blended rates. And the reason that this is relevant with the AI space yeah. is that Badhala has invested in a technology that will allow it to help make predictions for how you're going to perform financially quarter over quarter based yeah. on prior data that you've given it. Um, and so this could be really helpful, especially if in your, you're either a newer practicing attorney, maybe you have, you're growing your firm and you want to help get some projections. This can be a great tool to help you with monitoring it and help take some of that load off of you and make the projections for you. We like, we like when technology makes our life better and easier. And that's the whole point. So we have highlighted, oh, oh do One not more. pay. Okay, consumer, this is fun. So we've talked a lot about how these are AI platforms that can help your firm. This is an interesting platform we wanted to highlight that was in the news a little bit ago because they had put out that they would pay a million dollars. Or they were the first robot lawyer. The they first to be robot the first lawyer. And they had some price tag on it where they were willing to pay a lawyer to put an earbud in their ear and go to court and just say whatever they're saying through what they're learning on generative AI. Didn't go so well. No, that was shot down fast. But they have a really amazing, robust platform to help consumers. And at the end of the day, the reason that we're here, and I know the reason that you guys are here, is to help. 
right? We want to help people with their legal issues and do not pay is doing that. They're helping with a to appeal tickets, help with billing. They are not lawyers and nor do they say or expect to be lawyers. If it gets to the point where you need a lawyer, they're gonna say, go hire a lawyer. They are just giving information to our friendly tire kickers, which we all know well. Yeah, and I, I think on that note, Colleen, the biggest thing with do not pay is that it's helping consumers that they might not have a case. I think that a lot of us will recognize that we yeah. had those situations where you're talking to a potential new client and ask after asking a couple extra situational questions, yeah. you get details that let you know it's either not a case, it might not be a case that you're ready to take on. Um, it might be one that you're not confident that they have a, a good ground to stand on. Yeah. And so this is where Do Not Pay is a resource that is helpful. So as you can see, Do Not Pay allows you to have, um, there's a variety of terms that they help search on. They help show you different advice. So how what can happen if you break Landlord, piece, tenant. Landlord, okay. tenant. <laughs> yes, that's a definite, that's a big area. Yeah. Perhaps you need, you don't, you haven't been evicted, but you need to look at look things through to yep. say maybe you want to leave beforehand. Um, and we wanted to highlight this as well because for your different legal verticals, you might be looking for some content for your own websites. Perhaps you are someone who deals with real estate law. And by looking at Do Not Pay, you're able to generate some ideas of what the general public's interested in learning about. Sure. We hear from a lot of consumers that they, they just need advice and they need guidance. Sometimes they go right to the lawyer and then they're not ready to pay. So this right. helps them get some of that advice. And when they're ready to go, they get sent on to a lawyer. So, and they also have an AI chat uh, feature. So yes. this is something that can be added on as well. Um, and this will allow them to interact with the chat, with the do not pay. Definitely, it's a beautifully done website. So it's well worth taking a look. So uh, how's everyone feeling right now? <laughs> Lots of stuff. Let's throw it in the chat. Yeah. How are we doing? Any, are we having fun? Oh, good. Okay. Up, Anthony's we'll good. That. Okay. Anyone overwhelmed? Okay. <laughs> overwhelmed. Cool. I like this. So guys, we highlighted five platforms. And again, we had a half hour plus to do that. Annie, how many legal AI platforms are on market right now that could be helping lawyers? 65 plus at minimum. Okay. So that's a lot. That's a, that's a, that's a lot. A lot. A that's lot. a big <laughs> webinar. <laughs> yeah, it is. So what we wanted to do guys is show you a quick video to recap what we just learned and what's out there that we haven't learned yet. So play that video. <laughs> So again, that's just a little insight of what the platforms are. And we want to invite everybody to our AI Business Builder Bootcamp in September at the Four Seasons in Las Vegas. Just wanted to tell you a little bit about what we're going to, did AI create that? Ooh, good question, Robin. Uh, somebody else did and we'll explain. <laughs> um, so quick look at it, our, our agenda in Las Vegas. We're going to be networking. It is a phenomenal networking event. We're going to sit down with you and teach you how to register for ChatGPT, for Bing Enterprise. How are you going to get co-pilot? We will work with you to get that all set up. How to scale your business, intake, marketing, building a better brand, how to implement AI platforms. We just saw five of them. There's 60 that we could go through based on your practice area and your need. And that's something we'll all go through. All your meals are covered. It is so much fun. And you know what, guys? It's Las Vegas. So you know it's fun. If you, you know. And we'll also have Michael Gerber joining us oh, as well from the email. Um, someone who is famous for work in your work on your business, business not in, in your business. business. But maybe you don't believe us. Maybe you need to hear from somebody else. So um, without further ado, I am about to present to you, Mr. Elvis Presley. Oh, it was a bit like the Ed Sullivan show. You can't see my hips swish. <laughs> We're caught in a trap. We can't walk out because I love you too much, baby. We can go on together at the Business Builder. So come on and join us and have a good time. All right, folks. Hope you enjoyed Colleen and Andy. They're good. Come on. <laughs> so thank you, Mr. Elvis, thank you, Elvis. Presley. <laughs> Again here, we just wanted to showcase to you guys, not only are we experts in legal marketing, are we not only experts in AI, we're also experts in having fun. So we are going to pop the link in the chat right now. And yes, Elvis will be at the boot camp. That is a guarantee. Yes. Um, Elvis also is a very talented piano player. So get ready for that. 
Um, but please, um, we'll throw the link in the chat if you're interested. It is a two day work camp, work boot camp, where we're going to help you scale your business, grow your business, integrate AI, help networking. It is a phenomenal event. All your food is included, state-of-the-art link. We are throwing the link in right now as we speak, feverishly trying to put the link in. <laughs> um, so with that said, let's ask, let's ask some questions. We went through, thank you, Elvis. We thank you, Elvis. So yes, thank you. We went you. through a lot, so we would love to- um, Leave the building. <laughs> all right, Elvis has left the building, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So- um, We've thrown the chat in, uh, the link in, but let's take some questions about any of the AI platforms you have. If you have questions on our Business Builder Bootcamp, fire away. Don't be shy. I'll just start calling out people's names, William. <laughs> there's a lot of Williams in here though today. Oh, well, it was like the first two to answer. I was gonna say there's William Paoli, William McCarter. Right, a let's, lot of you in here. We're gonna start it off. $25 gift card to the person who answers the ask the first question would you have to come off mute yeah sarah it. great question so with 65 plus platforms which is best that is something that as personally i don't have the answer of what is best for a specific reason is that a lot of them are specific to the practice area so i saw someone asked a question earlier about patent law yeah um if it could help with patent law it perhaps can but there is a platform specifically for patent lawyers and so that's where that's, um, that's a lot of what we're going to go through at business builder is that we have the list of them that curated for each practice area of what we feel like might be the most helpful based on our research and what we've seen um there is a yeah. there is a platform for not every lawyer but every practice area. Absolutely. So it's really hard to understand what platform is best for you without understanding truly what it is that you need in your practice. Paula, your question for about the cost of case text, we're going to put inside of the PDF, we circulate yeah. all of the costs that we have that are publicly available. We do have the information for case text. Right now, Lexus is the only one that doesn't have it, but yeah. otherwise we coming it, soon. Yes. Okay, my practice whips on estate and business. Any thoughts on what the platforms? Okay, it, again, yeah. it, it really is going to depend on what you need. So that would be good for document creation, yep. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So it would really, if you're looking at estate planning, you might want to be looking at some of those documents to search through, make that database. Yep. Um, and just like Paula's question about inserting a document, have it review it. Yep. Um, that's case text all the way right now. Yep. Case text is the leader in that and allowing you to upload that document and interact in it in a very um, user-friendly manner. Yep. I think that's the biggest thing is that you don't want to feel like you need to have a degree and writing prompts to be able to get an answer. You just want to ask it the question and that's what it does. Right. I see in labor and employment, I would say, you know, you need legal research. So what's the best legal research platform? The cost of the boot camp is $4.97. It's a special rate that we're running for everybody in the room tonight. Like I said, it covers all your food, all your drinks, all your everything you can imagine. You play your airfare and you pay for your hotel, which we have a discounted rate at $2.99 at the Four Seasons. We were there in January. And I will say the Four Seasons is absolutely it's beautiful. beautiful. We make sure that every detail is white glove. It will be a phenomenal event, not only for networking, but for learning and growing your business, which is I mean, really why we're all here. Okay. Um, Bing Chat Enterprise, yes, it is. It's going to be available as a standalone. I believe that's coming sooner rather than later um, and specifically sooner than the co-pilot offering. The co-pilot offering is still looking like it's going to be a bit out in a couple more months possibly, but the Bing Chat Enterprise is going to be available for $5 per user um, per account. So if you've got five people in your firm, you're paying 25 yeah. bucks a month for it. And William, we're that good at negotiating. It is $2.99 for the four seasons. So yes, yes. you read that right. <laughs> yes. It is worth it. I'll tell you that. I will say totally on, on off topic, the sphere just opened. So we could do a little um, field, trip. <laughs> field trip to the sphere. I really want to see it. So mark that on our agenda. It was what, $2 billion? To $2 billion. Make it something wild. Insane. So we got to check that out when we're there. Any other questions coming in? Everyone's just everyone taking have, it in. Everyone have fun. Throw one in the chat if you felt like you learned something new today. Awesome. Hey, thank you. We'll take That's that. Awesome. Well, right. I don't know if there aren't any more questions. Well, guys, we really appreciate your time. Again, this is our weekly web series. We will continue to be back with new information. 
the news update will be long gone in a week because yeah. it'll be all new information. So we'll have some new ones back when we come back. We next have time. to. So we will see you guys. Um, I actually have a question. Yeah. I actually, I actually have a question. Sure. Awesome. Uh, you guys seem very cheerful about this uh, technology. And I actually, obviously, I did the research after the fact and make sure everything was good. I actually drafted a criminal uh, uh, a criminal uh, motion, uh, a demur, for example, a criminal demur. And I was blown away how accurate it was. And you guys seem to be gleeful and, and cheerful for this technology. And I went from the printing industry to the to being a lawyer because I didn't want a computer like Apple to take over my <laughs> trade again, as it did in the early 80, uh, late 80s and early 90s. You guys seem to be cheerful. I'm seeing the opposite. And, and talk about those fears. And I think they're, I mean, we were just talking about them in the car the other day. They're absolutely there. Um, but I think the perspective that we take is that we want to understand and try to use the technology to our best ability, because with education and understanding allows us to get comfort with it and understand, okay, yes, it's coming. Um, now, in the legal industry, in the next 10 years, what's going to happen? Who knows? In the next year, is ChatGPT going to be able to go to court? Probably not. Lawyers need to be lawyers. We need lawyers in litigation type situations. Our hope is that these tools and in any industry, in the marketing industry, right? That these tools help us become more efficient and more effective. I don't know if Annie yeah. want to add into that. I think that um, something that comes to mind there is that we often think that we, we live in a time where everything is a headline. I think yeah. that everyone, if they can get clicks to their website or clicks to their magazine or to their paper, they're going to do it. And they're going to try to scare you as much as humanly possible or make you turn on the channel. Right. And so that's where personally, I do a ton of research on this day in and day out to kind of assess across the board about what the temperature is. And if it's actually as, if it's really as bad as folks make it sound. And from yeah. what I've found, it's actually quite the opposite. Um, there's been a lot of extensive research that's been done through Lexis. And interestingly enough, I believe it's 80% of partners recognize that AI is something that is yeah. needed and welcomed in their law firm. It is typically newer attorneys that have a bit more fear because that is a lot of the work that sure. they're typically doing, um, which makes sense. I mean, if you're coming out as a three out or if you're a new associate, you might be feeling like, oh no, these are the tedious tasks I do. Is that going to go away my role? Um, so I think that those concerns, they're valid, right? I mean, but it, with anything to come Colleen's point, I'm a firm believer, the more you know, the more you empower yourself, yeah. the more you help set the tone for what's going to happen to you moving forward. So my goal really is to help everyone here understand how AI and machine learning works from a base perspective. So that way, when you see that headline saying every case that's coming out is hallucination, well, no, it's probably not. It might be in that specific setting. They might not have reviewed it. There's a lot of con contextual details that go into these things. So I think that the tone of the of the news is definitely um, panic mode. But yeah. I think in reality, there are there's a lot of responsibility also on the part of these companies and these platforms. We've spoken with a lot of these AI companies, and there yeah. is a lot of due diligence being done on their end. They're working with a lot of in-house counsel yeah. um, to advise them on what should be released and what shouldn't be released. And that's what we learned that from a sprinkling from a call with someone who used to be at Google that there's a lot at Google, but they never launch it because from a legal perspective, they don't feel it's safe ready. to do it and it's not ready. <laughs> so they won't push it. So I think that's something always to think about that. Well, and well, obviously there. the reason you guys are all here is because you're trying to learn, right? So you already have the competition. You're already above your competition. So it's now, how are you going to take these skills that we've taught you series 101, 102, 201, 301, and how are you going to implement this into your business? Let everyone else be scared. Let everyone else panic. Mm -hmm. Let you be educated and use this to build a better business. And that's what we strongly believe. Absolutely. Sorry, uh, may I ask a question, please? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we traditionally lawyers build by time, right? Yes. When we yes. use uh, chat GPT or whatever, you know, the time will be like a percentage of yes. what we <laughs> used to spend. Yes. How do we build clients then? It's a really big discussion. It's yeah. something that I've read a lot about. It's a definite concern from an ethical standpoint of how much 
could, should AI take out of the work and how much do you pay, bill for it? Um, they are, there are discussions about that, about should there be a standard across the board? What my personal take, I can't say exactly what percentage to charge or what not, but I just like to think if there is that billable hour that suddenly is reduced to be 10 minutes of work as opposed to one hour, use that extra 50 minutes or the extra 40 minutes to call the client or to talk to the client, get built more of that relationship. Something that we talk about a lot in the Business Builder Bootcamp is word of mouth referrals and how much that really does matter when it comes to finding an attorney. And so that could possibly be an opportunity is to nurture the clients that you have that you're working with. And then that'll help build your business reputation and your brand reputation. And it helps bring in more clients. So while the working hours you're doing and the computer might be less, you're doing work in other ways. Or you can take double the clients. That too. That's <laughs> another option too. I like that so, idea too. <laughs> yes, uh, we do. We'll send the links. Um, when we send the summary tomorrow, we'll send the links for our previous webinar. They are also on our YouTube channel, lawyer.com, where you can view all of our past videos as well. So again, we thank everybody for their thank time. You. We're so glad we are thank going to be question. here until y'all stop coming. So um, any future, yes, Anna, we will tell you about the future boot camps. Um, we're focused right now on Viva Las Vegas, but we do have other plans for 2024. So we will keep you posted on that. And again, it is a great, great two days with a lot of fun and a lot of learning. Yeah. So everyone have a wonderful early weekend. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you all for joining. And we Thank can't you. wait to see you at our next webinar. It's been a great audience. Thank, Thank you all. You. Thanks, guys. Thank have you. Bye. Good Bye. 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 Even I like that background too. <laughs> we did some great backgrounds I on that. I know. Thank you. May, may the AI be with you, says Nathan. That's oh, a good one, it. Nathan. I like it. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great night. Have a good one.